If you've ever built a slider inside WordPress, chances are you've come across Slider Revolution. Well, recently they've released version 6, and the developers reached out to me and asked me would I create some content for this new version. Well, today we're going to be taking a look at a brief overview of what Slider Revolution 6 is, how the interface has changed, and how you basically go around building your sliders. And before I start, I just want to say one thing. This is not a review. I'm just going to demonstrate, like I always do, exactly how to use various different functions of this particular plugin. And it's up to you to make your mind up whether you think it's for you or not. As always, all those applicable links will be in the description below. So if you want to check this out in more detail, you can click and follow that link and find out a little bit more. Okay, so I've gone ahead, installed Slider Revolution 6, and we're now ready to go over and take a look at the interface. So I'm going to jump over to the dashboard and you can see I've already got it open. Now, if you've ever used Slider Revolution in the past, this is going to look completely and utterly new to you. They've revamped the interface to streamline the way that you work, but also made it into a much darker mode, which personally I like. I like the dark mode. I'm used to working with this in my side, my Adobe apps, and that kind of works for me. Okay, so what do we have in the interface? Let's take a look over it. At the top, you can see we've got a range of different icons we can use to go to various different aspects of this particular plugin. The first thing is the module, so that's what we currently have open. Now, a module is basically a slider. Now, you can have sliders with multiple different slides, one slide. There's lots of different ways of setting those up, and in future videos, we'll take a look at things like that in a lot more detail. For now, we're just going to gloss over that just so you know what's inside that section. So underneath the module section, you can see we have four distinct icons, a new blank module, which is basically where we can create a new slider, a new module from a template, which we can actually go through and download one of the pre-built templates that are part of Slider Revolution 6, the manual import option, which means we can download and import any kind of slider. So if you create one on a different site and we want to use that exactly the same, or we want to use the basis for a new slider, we could do that using the manual import option. And finally, in this section, we have add-ons. Now, there are two ways that you can get access to Slider Revolution 6. It's either going to be something you purchase as a completely standalone product, at which point you get a serial number or key or license key. This allows you to have access to everything that Slider Revolution 6 offers. The other way, and probably a more common way for a lot of people, is it's bundled as part of a theme. So if you purchase a theme from someone like Theme Forest, you may find that Slider Revolution is included in that. But what's the difference between the two? The key difference between the two is the ability to use the templates, so you can download any of the templates that have been predefined as part of Slider Revolution 6, and the add-ons. Now, the add-ons are a range of extra functions that you can apply to your sliders or your modules that give you a range of really cool effects, things like parallax effects and things like that. And again, in future video, we'll take a look at utilizing some of these, but for now, just knowing the difference between the two is something that can help you make your mind up how you go about working with this Slider Revolution 6, or if you've got it bundled as part of a theme, why you don't have access to some of these features you may think you should have. Okay, with that out of the way, that's the basics under the modules. Next up, we've got the updates section. Now, this is where it goes through and tells us what version we're currently running. And as you can see, I'm running 6.08 and the latest available version is also 6.08. So I'm fully up to date. Next to that, we then got the update history. So we can find out what's been updated in any of these different revisions. And we can see if there's a problem we've seen previously, we can see if there's a bug fix or a change or an added feature listed underneath the update history. We've also got the system requirements that tells us what kind of things we need. We need to make folders writable, the memory limit, max upload size, and those kinds of things. And as you can see, I'm green ticked on all of those, so everything is in place and working perfectly. Next up, we've got the activation option. If we jump to activation, you can see what this does is it shows that this is registered. If I don't know how to find my code, I can click on find my code. It'll give me information about that. If I'm working with a domain and I've got this registered and I want to move it or I don't want to use it on that domain anymore, I can easily deregister the code, which means that then I can access that code and use it on another website without any licensing problems. The next thing you can see is what features are unlocked as part of having a premium version. So as you can see, as I said earlier on, we've got pre-made templates, we've got pre-made layer animations, 25 plus add-ons, and a range of other things. So we have a ton of really cool features that really make sort of having the full package version, if you want to access these, a very easy way to get access to these additional features. Then we've got news that will give us information about Theme Punch and the plugin itself, and we can link through to their social accounts and so on. Globals, which we can jump into, and you can see these are global settings that we apply to this particular plugin. Now, one of the things I really like on here is if you're building a website for a client and then you set yourself up as an admin, 
and you set your client up as editors or so on, they won't have access to Slider Revolution 6. But we can get around that no problem by clicking the global settings. And you can see at the top, we've got permissions. We can click and we can say who can actually access Slider Revolution 6. And as you can see, we can do it admin, editor and admin, or author, editor and admin. So we've got an option in there to easily go through and let people access this where we need to. Then we've got some global settings that we can go through and specify how different things work within this on a global setup. In other words, every single slider or module we create will have all these things applied to it. We'll leave those as they are. We're going to click to close out of that. Next up, we've got FAQs, which will take us over to the support site. If we just jump back in, finally, we've got support itself. So there's a ton of options underneath the first section. However, most of the things we're going to do is going to be underneath the module section. So we come back into that. What we can do is you can see I've already created a slider and any sliders you have created will be listed in this section. You can go through and sort those, show all modules and add a folder if you want to organize things out. If you're working with a lot of sliders throughout your entire site. So let's take a look at the slider we've already created. Once we've seen that and we can have a look around the interface, we'll take a look at how easy it is to actually load in a template. So I'm going to come into this one. I'm going to click and you can see I've got an option. I can directly come in and edit this if I want to, or I can click on the little drop down and you can see I've now got eight options under there. I can embed it. It'll give me the embed code. I can export this if I want to and then use the manual import option as we've seen above. I can see the HTML code. I can duplicate it and a range of other things on there. If I want to edit it, I can simply come in and click on edit. Once I've done that, that'll load in the actual content editor and we can start to see all the things we can do inside Slider Revolution. Now, this has a lot of options available. It's broken down into four distinct areas. You've got the top section. We've got all the controls on the right hand side. We've got the preview window and the timeline underneath it. So we've got all four key sections. We can go through and do a range of different things. We can back out of this. We can view and select any of the slides that we've got as part of the current module we're working with. We can also come in, add new slides if you want to, and you can see we've got a range of options there, or we can go to global layers. Now, global layers is something that will apply to every single slide that you create. So this is a great way that if you want to set something up like a logo or something, and you want that to be applied without having to go through and do it every single time, you can set a global layer up and do a lot of things in there. New slides, you can see we've got these are not named, but when we take a mouse over, we can easily see we can view them, we can delete them, we can copy them, or we can go into the settings for them. Just selecting the slide or coming over and clicking on the little cog icon will give us access to the slide options. And this is specific to this individual slide. You'll see if we come back up and choose a different slide, we'll have all the same options on the right hand side. But now any changes we make will apply to this particular slide and not globally. So there's a ton of options on the right hand side. We can also come in and add various different layers. Now, these work in pretty much the same way as you expect in any kind of animation software, or if you've used Photoshop and you used the layers inside there, this is going to be very familiar. And you can see we've got text layers, we've got image layers, buttons, and so on. If we take a look under text, you can see we've got quick style headlines, which is a nice way of quickly applying a style directly to the content we want to put in there. When we add new different layers, you'll see that if we take a look underneath, this is our layer stack. Under the layer stack, there's a ton of things we can do. We can come in and we can lock layers to make sure we don't accidentally move them around. We can come in and select anything we want. And you can see as we mouse over things, we'll get a blue outline telling us exactly what we're selecting. So clicking on something will give us that blue outline. We can then start making changes to that. To the right hand side of where we select these individual layers and do the various different things, we've got the timing setup. So this is the duration of our slide. And what you can see is we've got different times. So in other words, these times are when something is taking effect, for example, a fade in, we can say how long or what's the duration of that fade in effect. We can also grab these and we can stretch them out if we want to, to make them longer. We can also go through and move them around. We can do a range of different things with these just to make sure that we've got everything positioned exactly how we want it to. We can also scrub through this to see exactly what will happen with inside our animation on our particular slide. So you can see by doing that, we get a normal sort of animation effects, at which point we can go through, we can see exactly what any of those are doing at any given point within the actual timeline. So there's the timeline section. There's all the different layers we've got active inside there. There's all the options we want to do on the right hand side. We've also got a ton of additional options at the top. And again, this changes based upon the actual layer that we select. So we come down to say, for example, copy shape two. all the options at the top will now apply to that particular layer. We can change that if we want to. We can easily come in and just choose a different layer. We can rename these to name them whatever we want to give them a little bit more sort of logical progression when we're working through these things. And then we can go to things like 
we can duplicate or copy, we can bin those off, we can lock those layers, we can adjust the visibility, we can also do hide the highlight boxes, and we can adjust the stacking order by using the up and down arrows. So a ton of really simple options in there. If we take a look then to the right hand side of that, we've got additional options. We've got single select, add to selection, or drag to select. We've also got things like undo and redo. We can go through and preview this on different types of document layouts, in other words, notebooks, desktop, tablets, and mobiles, and so on. So next up, we've got context help. If we want to enable that, we can simply click on that and you can see it says hover over an option to learn more. Or if you want to, you can actually come in, type in the keyword and find out help from that. We've also then got this option which allows us to go through and see exactly what tips are available for any of the different options. So you've got a lot of help all directly in line, directly inside the editor itself to make learning it or if you get stuck on anything considerably easier. I'm going to close that back down. And finally, we've got this option at the end which allows us to open up the quick style, which we can then apply to various different things. So where we've got this text selected, if I want to, I can simply click on that and it'll apply that style directly to it for us. So it's a very quick and easy way of working. If you want to, you can come in and undo that. You can see we can use the keyboard shortcuts of Control and Z or Control and Y. So let's just undo that, put it back to what it was. We'll close that down out of there and that'll close our headings out. So we'll close that down. So you can see it's very easy and there's a lot of quick time saving features in here to make it just setting things up and designing things a lot easier than it ever was before. So I'm not going to go through all the different things you can do on here because there are a ton of options underneath the editor and the layer options. We have a huge amount. We will take a look in the next video on how to create your first multi-layered slider. So I'll get you up to speed today. We're just going to go over the basics and show you how you can see the editor, but also how we can do things like load in some of the predefined templates. Finally, we've got then is we've got the save option and we can preview this. So we click on preview, it'll show us what this should look like with all the effects and everything else we want in place. We can also switch between the different types of devices to make sure it looks the way you want it to across any kind of device, device size, screen, orientation, and so on. Okay, so that's what I wanted to show you in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back out of this, we're going to click on back. We say leave because I don't need to save the changes on there. This will take us back into the first module section. And now we can take a look at the new modules from template. Now, once we load in this template section, we have a ton, and I mean a ton of different pre-built modules or sliders. See, what you can see is they're filtered down the left-hand side. So if you want to, you can come in to see the hero ones that will load in. And it'll tell us exactly how many there are on there. And you can see we can easily come in then and we can preview any of these to see what they look like. At which point then, if we like them, we can install that as part of it and we can start to use it. Now, some of these are purchasable. They're not freebies. They're not part of the actual account itself. So you can buy now if you want to. So it's worth bearing in mind that not all of these are going to be available to you for free. However, like I say, we've got a ton of really cool options we can start to use in here. If you want to go really basic, we can click on basic and just have some really simple kinds of interfaces. So a YouTube gallery, a web product in light or dark, a range of different things. Now, if you're design challenged and you don't have the sort of skills to create something really eye-catching and professional, you can use these and just swap out the various different background images and things like that, the text, change the text on there to get a really good looking slider or module. And then you can use those in your site without having to go through the time and effort of building this from scratch. So let's go ahead and find something that I think is gonna be a good starting point for what we're creating. We'll keep it basic, because like I say, that's gonna be a good starting point if you're new to Slider Revolution 6. So let's just say I like this web product dark. I can preview it if I want to, or I can click on the plus option, which will then give me a range of different things I can do. I can check to make sure that we've got various different things and we re meet the requirements. So you can see it says what it is, the setup notes, check out the documentation, instructions for changing the menu. So even if you are new to this and you like this and you're thinking, I really don't know what to do after I import it, well, there's documentation here that's gonna be great for you to get started. So we can go through that if we want to. We can also go through and say, we can say re-download online and page uh, create blank page. Let's just keep this simple and say install template. That's gonna go through and download all the relevant assets and everything and then load that module into Slider Revolution so we can start working and editing and using this as the basis of our new module. So you can see that didn't take long at all and there's our new module, Web Product Dark 1. We can come in if we want to and we can rename that and we can just say, I don't want to have that as Web Product Dark 1. I'm gonna change that to Product Slider. Okay, so once we've done that, let's come in and edit it. So we'll click to edit and that'll then load it in. And once that's loaded in, we can start going through and changing any aspect of this that we want. You can see all the things we took a look at earlier on. So we've got the timeline down the bottom, all still in there. We can close this down if we want to, to keep it nice and simple and clean and just open up the interface to see more. 
we want to, we can preview this to make sure that it looks good. So we'll give that a couple of seconds, and there you go. That'll load all the different aspects in. Now, don't worry about this being a little bit jittery. That's not down to Slide Revolution 6. That's just because I'm screen recording while I go through this animation. So it just kind of slows down a little bit inside Chrome. When you use this on a website itself, you don't have that kind of issue. But what you can see is it's a very, very nice looking slider. We've got an option for the menu at the top, so we could use this as a single page kind of design that gives people a lot more access to various different things. A simple landing page, for example, an upsell page, a ton of different reasons we could use this. So let's just close that down. So we now we want to, we can go through and start editing anything we want on here. So you can see we've got the text, we can click on it, and then all we need to do is just start editing. So by selecting the text that we want, you can take a look on the right hand side, and you can see now we can go through and change that. Uh, we can put whatever we want in there. Let's just change that from beautiful and we'll say fantastic and you can see it updates in real time it's all very simple and clean we can do whatever we want there we can adjust the alignment of the text if you want to we can adjust everything the way you'd normally expect to inside kind of any editing software and if we scroll down you can see we've got the html tags for this the alignment we can change the text if you want to we can add icons in there we can toggle this based upon various different aspects all those kinds of really cool things so let's just say we wanted to change this actual button at the bottom. We can click on the button. You can see it says get started today. But how do we go about doing things like making that linkable? How do we make it clickable? Well, Slide Revolution 6 gives us a ton of options. So if we take a look at the moment, we're currently editing the contents. In other words, the actual button content, the text and so on. We can, if you want to, come in and adjust the style on there. And you can see now we can change the font family that's being used, the background color, the text color, all those kinds of things. What we want to do, though, is we want to come down and adjust the action. Now at the moment, because this is a template, there's already an action assigned to it. So you can see it says call to action, triggered by, and then what the action actually is. What we can do is we can change all of those things if we want to. Let's hit click on there, which says triggered by, and you can see it says trigger memory, keep last state. That's perfectly fine, we'll leave that as is. But what we wanna do is change what it does. We're gonna click on there, and you can see it says now interaction, or in other words, what is going to happen to trigger this particular action. Click is perfectly fine. It says jump to slide. We don't want it to do that. We want it to actually take it to a URL. So let's just click on there and you can see we've got a lot of different options we can go through for the action that's gonna be applied to this particular button. We're gonna say something simple like a simple link. I'm going to click on there, you can see it says now, well, what do you want it to do? What's the actual link URL, the link target and so on. So what we can do is we can simply click in there and we can say we wanna put this into something else. So we're gonna say, we want this to go to my particular website. So we'll just say, there's the link, wptouch.co.uk. Link target, select from list. We can click on there. You can see it says same window or new window. I'll say new window. It says, what's the link type? Is it jQuery triggered? And again, you can see we can do that. Or we can keep it really, really simple and have tag link. Whatever you want to set up. So once that's done, we've just completed that. And we'll just close that down. So we've now changed the action of that button. So let's just save this to commit the changes that we've made. Let's preview it. And when that first one comes up, we can click on this button. And that will then open up a new slide, a new tab, and you can see it now takes me immediately over to the link that I just created. So even pulling in pre-designed templates is still incredibly easy to make changes to. We have all the options at the bottom for our timeline. So you wanna come in there and make changes to that. We can make changes to anything we want in there. Any of the durations, any of the items, you can see we've got slogan, subline, heading, content three, iPhone, and so on. We can click on that and we can make any change we want to on there. If we want to change the graphic, we can just simply, simply change the source. So it's very, very easy to make changes. And that's a kind of brief overview of what you can see inside the new Slider Revolution 6. Now, before we wrap this video up, let's take a look at one more thing. Let's back out of this again. Let's redirect back in and let's take a look at the add-ons that are available. Let's hop into that particular section. And as you can see, we've got a ton of really cool add-ons that we can just expand what you can do inside Slider Revolution 6 itself. Now I've covered some of these in previous videos on the older version of Slider Revolution 5, but they should give you an idea of the kinds of things you can do. So we looked at things like duo tone, and I've taken a look at some of the other things we can do like distortion and so on. But there are a ton of options available that allow you to install additional modules or additional add-ons that expand what you can do. So you've got some really nice things. So if you wanna create a custom login page with, for example, an animation behind it and different things going on, well, you can install the login module. If you wanted to come down and set up things like adjacent posts or a custom 404 page, well, you can easily add that add-on into your Slider Revolution 6 and start accessing those additional functions and features.
Now, I'm not going to cover those in this particular video, and we might take a look at one or two of these in future videos. But just knowing that you have these as part of the full package, you know, as in, I say, like, not as part of something that comes with a theme, you have a lot of options available to expand exactly what you can do inside this particular version of Slider Revolution 6. Installing any of these add-ons is super simple. You select the add-on that you want, then simply click on Install Add-on. That will then download it, and you can activate it and we then have access to that additional module. So you can see it now highlights that in full color. So when we can log into this section, take a look at the add-ons, we can easily see what's installed and what's not installed just by flicking through this list and seeing what's in color. Super simple. Let's close that down and we now have access to those extra features if we want to use those at any point. And that's really what I wanted to cover in this video. It's not an in-depth video into how do you use Slider Revolution 6. It's an overview on the kinds of features you've got. And it'll also give you a good idea of what's updated if you're using an older version, or you're just interested in finding out what kinds of things Slider Revolution 6 can do. In future videos, we will be taking a look at a lot more detail. And in the next video, I'm going to be taking you through step-by-step -step creating your first module or your first slider, go through the entire process. So be sure to hit that subscribe button to be notified every time new content is added to the channel. Well, as always, all the applicable links are in the description below. And if you'd like to find out more great content on how to get the most out of WordPress, consider clicking on the links you can see on screen right now. They'll get you up to speed with all the kinds of good things you can do with WordPress. As always, my name has been Paul C. This has been WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.